Having won at the World Cup in 2022, Argentina have their sights set on adding the 2024 Copa America to their trophy cabinet. Lionel Scaloni has built a team that not only boasts immense talent, but also exhibits tactical flexibility, and is seen as a cohesive unit that can adapt to various game scenarios. Here is how you can replicate Scaloni's Copa America tactics in FT24. Lionel Scaloni prefers to use a 4-3-3 formation. Now the best way to replicate this formation with all the individual player roles set in place, it should be set to a 4-3-2-1 system. This will help the likes of Angel Di Maria as well as Alvarez move freely in the front line and combine frequently with the likes of Lionel Messi who will be the focal point of the side. He will look to orchestrate the attacking movements whilst also looking to be a very good contributor on the offensive end. A 3-3-4 shape will more or less look to form and generate when attacking the opposition, having the likes of McAllister join at the front line. On the defensive end, the shape will more or less look like a 4-4-2 system. Scaloni's tactical approach offers the team a lot of freedom to dictate and choose with what they are going to do, whether that's on the offensive end or the defensive end. And taking a look at the defense and the defensive style, it should be set to balanced. Argentina will consistently look to mix their defensive strategies, but the one thing that will remain consistent will be the fact that in the midfield zones, they will always remain combative. Players such as Julian Alvarez and Angel Di Maria will occasionally apply pressure high up the field, looking just to hurry up the opposition's build up play. While the midfield, especially Rodrigo de Paul, will look to intensely press the opposition in the central zones, looking to regain possession for the side and disrupt the midfield play. Argentina's team defensive width should be set to 40. Now, this is a more condensed, balanced structure, but it will still allow for the condensed nature to occur, especially in the central areas. But at the same time, it will allow Argentina to still effectively defend the flank regions. The depth is set to an aggressive high mid block. Now, this can help facilitate the offensive play, having the sense backs also very involved in it, the attacking outlets. But at the same time, with it being a mid block, it can still protect the team against those swift counter attacking moments. This depth can help the team press high up the field and help pin the opposition back in their own half while still offering good defensive outlets for the side. So taking a look at Argentina's offensive outlets under Scaloni and the build up play should be set to slow build up. Often Argentina will look to build up very effectively from the back, having the sense backs look to play the balls further forward and look to more or less dictate and set the tempo of the game. Players such as Messi can look to drop a bit deeper into the midfield and combine frequently with the players in and around him. This will help him orchestrate the play, whilst also dictating Argentina's tempo of their game. The chance creation for the side should be set to forward runs. Now, essentially, Argentina do tend to play a very good possession-based brand of football, but there is also a lot of rotations and movements that occur, and I think the best way to have this display in-game is with forward runs set to be on. You'll have the likes of Julian Alvarez and Lionel Messi swapping positions, Messi on the left, Alvarez up front or even the likes of Angel Di Maria interchanging with the other two players. This will also occur in the midfield zones as well and that's exactly what you want to see. You also want to have the midfield players as well as the wing backs bombing further forward and helping pin the opposition back in their own half at times. The width is set to 20. Now this will help create that nice compact attacking condensed structure in the midfield zones. This will also contribute to the interchange of positions that you will see quite frequently in game whilst having the wing backs and occasionally the right wing and Angel Di Maria interchange and attack the wider spaces. The players in the box should be set to six as Argentina don't overly look to commit too many players into the attacking zones and a lot of their attacking play does stem from the outside before they work their way into the attacking third. The corners and the free kicks of course as for always they should be set to four. Taking a look at the player roles under Scaloni for this Argentina side. So the goalkeeper in Martinez will be set to come for crosses as well as play as a sweeper keeper. Martinez tends to excel at claiming those aerial balls. He is tall, he's got a massive frame on him and he is very good at being able to just deter the opposition from frying in those attacking balls. At the same time, you want him to be a sweeper keeper even though you are playing a mid block. You want him to sweep up just in behind your back line looking to protect them from any swift counter attacking moments just in case that they aren't really switched on and they might be caught out. But at the same time as well, Martinez is very good at being able to build up under pressure from the back. The two centre backs in Romero as well as Lissandra Martinez, they will both be set to step up. Now you want them to be very imposing, very aggressive. And at times you do see them follow their opposition man into the midfield zone. So if the likes of the striker or the forward tends to drop off and drop into the midfield, you will often see the likes of Romero or Martinez or even Otamendi follow their man into the midfield, making sure that they aren't really being able to link up the play very effectively. You want to have that nice aggressive approach from both of them. Both of your centre-backs are very good at being able to set the tone of the game. 
they can choose to interchange those shorter passes with the midfield, looking to maintain and retain possession. But at the same time, they're also very good at spraying those longer balls in behind, looking just to speed up the tempo of the attacking outlets. Out wide now to your two fullbacks in Acuna as well as Molina. Now you will see that both of them will join the attack. You want them flooding forward. You want them attacking as much as possible, providing those crosses or cutback opportunities from the wider regions. But what I noticed was Molina was always alternating between attacking the wider areas and coming inside and overlapping with the likes of Angel Di Maria. So that's more or less why I've set him to having a mixed run type. Whereas Acuna essentially will always hug the touchline and be an out there ball down the left flank. The defensive midfielder is very important to the success of the side. Often you'll see the likes of Paradise dropping between the two center backs, formulating a back three and freeing up the two wing backs to bomb forward and attack from the wider areas. You will want him to have that tight marking approach for the defensive behavior, looking just to always be on his man and not give the man as much space as he might want or require. Staying back will also be essential as well as normal interceptions and then you want him to be the deep line playmaker. This will help him again drop between the two defenders and look to formulate that back three system. At the same time as well, he's also very good at collecting the ball and playing those diagonal balls out wide. Either to the likes of Acuna, Angel Di Maria or even Molina in those wider areas of the field. Rodrigo de Paul is more of the aggressor in the midfield and often you will see him combine with Paradise and more or less formulate a double pivot in the midfield zones. It depends on what Argentina are looking to try and establish. If they are looking to just make sure that they're being defensively sound, you will see the double pivot more or less formulates. And we did see it quite a few times versus Canada, just looking to stabilize the midfield zone. So you want him to be able to stay back while attacking, although every now and then he will venture further forward, especially if the attacks are being flooded forward as well as you want him to stay on the edge of the box. Very rarely do you see Rodrigo de Paul in the box attacking. Aggressive interceptions will be a necessity as you want him to bring that aggressive nature into the midfield zones and then finally cover the wing and stick to position. The left central midfielder now will be the more attacking of the three, looking to get forward as much as possible and link the play between the midfield and the attack. The likes of McAllister does tend to combine quite nicely with the attacking line, often also joining up with that attacking line and more or less slotting in as a hybrid left winger, especially when the likes of Alvarez attacks the more central areas. The support on crosses should be set to having a balanced approach, allowing him to sometimes break in the box himself, and we did see this quite often in the game versus Canada. But at the same time, because he will be a part of this midfield, you want him on the edge of the area looking to try and facilitate those offensive movements before breaking into the box himself or playing in another pass for one of his teammates. Aggressive interception should be applied as you want him bringing that aggressive nature alongside Rodrigo de Paul in that midfield zone, looking just to disrupt and break up the opposition's play. And then finally, cover the wing and drift wide. Quite often we saw McAllister drifting out wide into that left wing position and looking to combine frequently with Acuna in that wider space. Julian Alvarez more so seen as a striker, but is deployed as a left wing. Now this is more or less because of his insane work rate that he does tend to possess, where he can choose to track back and pick up the runners from those wider areas. So you want him to stay central when in attack, and this will help him quite nicely interchange with Messi. Have Messi either drop a bit deep and almost play as a number 10, or alternatively have Messi drift out wide to the left-hand side. So you want Alvarez attacking the central zones as much as possible, and this will also allow McAllister and Acuna to operate as those hybrid left wingers. At the same time, the attacking runs should be set to mix, although Alvarez does have that tendency to break in behind and use his pace to the team's advantage, and can be a target man for those long balls over the top. Aggressive interception should be applied as both Di Maria and Alvarez tend to cover for the, the lack of work rate, you could say, from Lionel Messi on the defensive end. And they are two players that will aggressively press the opposition every now and then, trying to speed up their backline play and um, potentially go ahead and cause a few errors and mistakes. And then finally, you want them to come back on defense. Angle Di Maria is being played as a right forward in the system, but more so it will look to formulate a right wing position for him, allowing him to interchange with the likes of Messi and Alvarez and the central attacking players, while still being able to attack the wider right channel, having him interchange very frequently and effectively with Molina. So you want him to be able to drift wide whilst also maintaining a mixed attack. Now this will help him break him behind as well. He does still possess at his ripe old age, he still possesses the pace to exploit the opposition with those runs in behind, or alternatively, he can choose to come a bit shorter and combine with the other central players. At the same time, just like with Alvarez, you want him aggressively pressing and dropping back and supporting the defense. The likes of Lionel Messi is given the freedom to dictate and orchestrate the offensive play. You will often see Messi in this role drifting all over the place, whether it's to the left-hand side, the right-hand side, or dropping a bit deep and helping facilitate in the midfield zones. 
In order to successfully replicate this role, the support runs should be set to maintaining a balance width as well as playing as a false nine. And this will help him drop a bit deeper, get on the ball a lot more, and like I say, link the play and try and get his teammates involved in the attacking outlets. The interception should be set to conservative as Messi doesn't really look to press or aggressively, you know, involve himself on the defensive end or just trying to win the ball back. That is what his other teammates will essentially do for him. And then finally, you want him to stay forward, not necessarily having him be the outlet ball, but again, his defensive work rate isn't always there, so he can be the out ball in certain moments, trying to stem together a few attacking options on the break. And there you go, people. That is how I would implement and replicate successfully Lionel Scaloni's Argentina Copa America 2024 tactics into FC24. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to smash that like button down below. Subscribe and all that good stuff, please. It would be absolutely fantastic if you could. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. That would be sensational to hit fantastic in fact these are the tactics i absolutely love them to death one of my favorite tactics i think i've made so far in fc24 um in fact i'm going to give them a 10 out of 10 rating that is how much i really like them the control the uh, amazing ability to interchange between the front line and the midfield and like i say the the way that you can assert dominance on the opposition is sensational the five to ten games that i played with the system and you know these players and, and the instructions more times out, out of well, more times than not, I had around 65% possession and more, sometimes even 80% possession. So it is fantastic to use. I love the way that this team sets out and plays. Um, but you guys will have to let me know down below in the comments section. Now, essentially, I would love to do more Copa America teams, but we don't have that many teams in the FC24. It is the most stupidest thing in the world. We've got, I think, Mexico, USA. I think those are the two teams that we have, which I will do. I will definitely do them. But I would have loved to have done Brazil. I would have loved to have done Uruguay, Colombia, um, Canada even. Canada are, are going to be a, a big force in, in the Copa America competition. But I can't because they're not in the game. And I don't necessarily always like just taking a random team and saying, guys, just imagine this team is Colombia or Brazil. I don't enjoy doing that. So I'm not going to. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a shame because... I do think that some of those teams will have some fantastic tactics, but unfortunately, they're just not in the game, which is a big shame. A big, big shame. But you guys will have to let me know down below. Do you like these tactics? Do you like the system? But before we go, please, we have the Brom Squad Gaming Discord server. It will be down below the link. Click that, join up if you are interested in real football talk as well as FC24 tactics chat and all that good stuff. But anyways, until the next time, until the next one, I hope you guys have a smashing goddamn day. And I'm out of here.